all right so what is going on today youtube got another and we got a new discussion video for you guys today now i'm going to talk to you guys about something that i'm pretty sure is going to make a lot of people um dislike this video possibly or you know just click off the video and don't want to hear anything but i'm going to say it anyways all right is anybody else besides me sick of the way packs are right now and what i mean is are you guys sick of the hollow per pack because i am there's no excitement in buying boxes anymore for me or at least for mine. So let me give you my stance on this you know before when there's a rare pack and you know i used that you know you used to buy boxes or something like that you know you was excited because you have a chance to pull the pot of Duvali. You have a chance to pull Solid Morning. You have a chance to pull Effect Veiler. You have a chance to pull Dark Arm Dragon, Heraclinos, Charge of Light Brigade, Stra I mean, not Straddles, but Dark Rifer, Lord of Darkness, all these cards, right? Always have a chance to pull them. You may not pull them all the time. And yes, it sucks when you don't pull them, but when you do, you you, you can make your money back. Now, for me, my my best, you know, pack pulling was Duelist Revolution. I pulled, I pulled Pot of Duality. I pulled Solid Warning, Scrap Dragon, Effect Veiler, every expensive card in that thing, and, and it was good for me. It was good. Now I understand a lot of people uh, couldn't, you know, couldn't get, couldn't buy boxes or didn't want to buy boxes, and they couldn't afford Pot of the Wallies. And yes, that does suck because everybody else can't play with it. But then they then it get, gets when it gets reprinted, everybody can't play. And I understand that is a problem when everybody can't play and it's really like pay to win because you have better cars than everybody. I understand that, but I'm saying what enjoyment do you get from just pulling supers every pack? Like let's just go over Coder to Duelist, which a lot of people are saying like these last two sets, Circuit Break and Coder to Duelist, a lot of people are saying they're just terrible sets. I don't believe they're terrible sets. I just believe the hollow per pack really kills anything that you would want from this set because everything is inexpensive and you don't like, I don't have to buy a box to basically buy the cards I want. I don't need to buy a box. I can just buy the cards separately. Now that that is good. Like I said, that is good when everybody, you can afford everything single, so like single handedly, like you can just buy the card and then have it. You can buy three of and not really, you know, put a dent in your pocket. Sure, that is good. So I'm not saying that that isn't good, but what I'm saying is, where is the, you know, motivation, I guess. The motivation for you to buy a box is, I, I feel like, for me, it definitely isn't there. Um, I don't want to spend my credit on box boxes. I don't want to spend my money on boxes because I know, like, I can just pull a Vendred Reorigin, which is a dollar. And for all you Vendred players, go buy six right now. But, yeah like let's look let's look at these cards because people are saying these are bad sets now these are special editions so these really don't count let's start off with mrs radiant and we're just starting off with the best selling mrs radiant good link too right okay not a bad card at all heavy storm duster that's not a bad card at all ib uh it's not a bad card it's not a bad card like <clears throat> it's not bad it's it's just it's used in world challenge it's used in other decks it's not bad miss Starboy, once again not a bad card World Legacy War Chalice. You guys know this isn't a bad card. Licorice. Come on, do I need to say more? M Duke. Okay, you could say that it's a not that good of a card, but it's still a decent card. I don't even need to talk about Candina. Come on. Come on. Like, come on. Sure, you can have that. That's a pretty good card. That's a pretty good card. Okay, even though this is not the greatest card, it's, you can say that, but it's still a good, like, it's, no, it's not a good card. It, I mean, it, it, it's okay. But think about that. Like, there, there, there's been sets where there was nothing in the like nothing in the whole set. Like, Snipe Hunter was like literally the best card, and I believe what was it Tactical Evolution? I think DZ did a video about that. But <clears throat> Snipe Hunter was the best card in that whole set. That's a problem. You get, look how many look look how many other cards there is. And look, they're, they're five cents. So when you pull a Goki rematch, what do you do? You just rip it, right? Because it's nothing. It's worth any. It's worth nothing. Back in the day, at least a super would fetch you a five to ten dollars. Goki rematch would have probably been in that range, maybe even cheaper. But like light stage would have been a fifteen dollar card possibly. Candina would definitely would have been a twenty to twenty five dollar card. Licorice would have probably been five to ten dollars also. So when you buy a box, you know when you pull these cards, you're not you're just you're not just looking at it like God. You know I'm wasting my money because the only way you can really plus with Coder to do this, you have to pull this. You have to pull um, 
what else what else do you have you have to pull firewall dragon which is thirty dollars like thirty dollars like what is that like the, the box is yes forty to forty five dollars but let's say like you you do sell the firewall dragon at full price and the spellbook and knowledge you're just going even and that's just with two cards the rest of these cards are all like under a dollar under two dollars under three dollars I mean, that's why I feel like a lot of people just do not feel like these these sets are very underwhelming to them. They have good cards, like the Supreme King cards. All three of those cards are good. Um, let's see, Lumina. This is a decent card. I mean, Grisu is played in every deck. This card is good too. Uh, what else? Topic Rod Bomber Dragon, which is going to be played in you know a OT a plant OTK deck that literally just won in Japan. That's only eight bucks. What do you get with that? Trickstar Reincarnation. 20 bucks okay good card look these are not bad cards by any rescue fair is a great card but these are not like bad cards like i can understand if you were just a whole bunch of you know abyss actors running around in the set but it's not trap tricks mantis is a good card punisher dragon is decent it's not good uh ddd that is a good card uh guy saber is pretty decent recall is really like it's it's crazy it's like okay but it's not really that good um, what else? What else do we got here? Um, don't know what that does. I'm not going to check into that. Um, don't know. Um, <laughs> this is a very good card. Um, well, good for, you know, the set. I don't know what any of these other cards. This is decent, but, you know, nobody's playing it. Um, but, yeah, man, the set is not. I don't feel like the set is, but this is a very underrated card. I don't feel like the set is actually bad. This is a great card, too. This is a Debris Dragon. These cards are all good. This is a, another tour guide. So all these cards are good. But the fact that you, you don't basically, I think that's what really kills a lot of this card is really good. I, I, like, I think it kills a lot of, you know, motivations to play this or buy this or even participate and play Yu-Gi-Oh! Because you can't gain anything off the credit you win unless you buy single cards or, you know, if you get real, real lucky. Like you have to get like, it's bad when you have to get super lucky just to get, you know, go break even. That's a problem, and I don't think we need to keep going through these cards. But let's go to Circuit Break. Uh, best selling, Hollow Hollow. Okay. Well, like I said, the Outer Guy is short. The Rockets are probably a bad archetype. It's it's not good. Gokies are evenly matched. Is fifty five dollars. This back in the day would have easily got you one hundred dollars. It wouldn't have been no question. This would have been a hundred dollar card. Quick launch. This would have probably been ten to fifteen, just because it's a secret. And so now when you pull these cards, you're not you upset, but you're not super upset because you got a four dollar secret. And it, that's just bad. What else? Um Subterra Behemoth, that's uh it's okay. Uh let's see. Fuse line. This is probably one of the worst secrets of all time. But like I said, you still would have got a you know five to ten script draw. Jesus Christ. Bora load is only 30. Once again, amazing card. Um, just done doing double helix now this was 30 when it came out so that was that that's indicative of how good the actual card was and how good the deck was $30 for a double helix you know yes it was very expensive for spiral players but when you buy a circuit break box and you pull the double helix you were excited because either you get to play with it or you get to sell it and make some money um, what else is here let's see let's actually let's just go to all the secret rares let's see what's a secret rare in this box and look look at this evenly match is the best secret rare in here oh yeah and board, no, board load so basically if you can go even with it you actually plus with the box but you have to pull evenly matched and you're basically going to pull another one of these cards akashic is very it is good too but for the most part all these other ones are under five dollars which is terrible let's go to one set now i know this is probably one of the best sets of all time but Let's use it for um, let's use it for reference. Now let's see this. Let's go to their secret rares, right? Bam, right? Let's go to the secret rares. Uh, let's see the highest secret rare they have is a dark arm dragon, which is fetching twenty two dollars when it's at one and not played in any ma any main deck. It's not played, and it's still fetching twenty two dollars. Now let's look at rainbow dark dragon which is literally not seeing no type of play like none at all not even in and i even the deck is supposed to be good in like not even in that is it good let's go to a first edition near met look at this thirty dollars thirty dollars thirty dollars pretty much for this card that can't that they don't even play dark rifer you know once again if i go to the near mints 
it's just you know it's still expensive you can still make your money you can go buy one of these boxes i guess these are the only two cards that are bad and i'm pretty sure if they're what let's see near mint first edition you can still get three dollars for that you still get three dollars for this now don't forget this set came out so long ago I, I i forgot what I, I don't know i knew it came out in like the 2008 or seven or something like that look at this first edition near mint is five dollars for five dollars for a card that you can't even use let's go to duelist revolution i'm just using cards um now yes there were some der terrible boxes and that's really mostly the early days but later look at this Tw look this is still fetching thirty dollars this is still fetching thirty dollars look this is twelve dollars these are for some reason twelve dollars mystical ref panel bam draco equest that nobody plays seven it's like scrap dragon five dollars bamboo shoot all these cards are still maintaining a decent amount so i can go out and buy one of these boxes and still make money isn't that isn't that bad where you can go buy one of these boxes buy one of the old old Yu Gi Oh boxes and make more money than you can with a new one you don't think that's a problem look first edition near mint you can pull you can seven seventeen dollars um, now if you pull you know if you pull an ultimate rare warning you're just like I said you can pull any of these cards you may not pull all these cards but I'm just saying you can at least make some type of money back you're not going to always be you know in the neck this is $15 for a, a near mint that's a ghost probably shouldn't use that one but still like you can still make something off of it and that's what I'm talking about like with the new with the way the new set is set up it just it doesn't to, to me it just I, I feel like it's ran its course I feel like we should go back or find a happy medium something because this hollow per pack is really not helping the sets out it's really driving me basically it's not motivating me to go out and earn credit like yeah winning is fun and all that but what am I going to spend it on what am I going to spend all my credit on boxes that I'm basically not going to go even with even though it is credit but I'm not going to gain no money from like literally my brother bought a box of circuit break and pulled overdone barrier on chimera that's five dollars for both secrets if you get that that's five dollars that's disgusting that's disgusting folks that's disgusting so let me know you guys' thoughts down below if you guys actually like the way it is do you want to change it do you want to find what what do you feel like would save how sets are now like i said i don't feel like the sets are actually bad with the cards i just feel like the super or hollow per pack is what's really hurting you know the whole booster box so thank you guys for watching i hope you guys did enjoy it if you guys would like to support the channel all i ask for you guys to do is click an ad that'd be enough and i will see you guys tomorrow